it's never an easy task to talk about uh, bad news in the world of wrestling, whether it be somebody who was like top of the game in WWE, like Eddie Guerrero, or down to just like, you know, one of the average Joe indie workers. Somebody even like Jim Lanham. Yeah. We just, we just who, who was ran a promotion, not yeah. even a wrestler. But uh, this past this Monday that uh, just just passed, uh, Mike Davis, better known as Dynamite Davis in UWA, part of the trio, the Bro Team Pack, uh, was fatally shot. Uh, yeah, it's. You know, he was known for just being an extremely passionate human being as far as everything he liked, including professional wrestling. Uh, and being like a, an upstanding citizen of the community. It wasn't that long ago that he was awarded one of like a community award for uh, being like a helpful person. Uh, that uh, I don't uh, I don't know him as a wrestler. I've I've I can't s sit here and say that I've seen a match at all. But just just as a human being, it's it's sad to know that people have to live through situations like this. People have to now go on and know that someone they loved, someone they cared about, hell, fans who enjoyed this person's work have to know that he was taken far too soon and in the most the most selfish way possible. Yeah. Uh, apparently he worked at a I think it was a Verizon store and was robbed at some point last week and the, the, a lot of the police are thinking that the two things might be connected. Uh, it is a total tragedy. I mean we haven't talked about him on the show before, but he worked closely with a lot of people that we have mentioned before. Arcadia, uh, Eric Corvus from the Crusade for Change, uh, Jeff Cannonball, who was just made in, I think, the last CZW show. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, I think to me the worst part about it is he's only 25 years old. He's young, younger than both of us. Yeah. Uh, you know, never easy news to bear be it a 25-year-old independent wrestler or anyone else involved. Uh, so, from the wrestling rundown, our condolences to his family, his friends, and his fans in this difficult time. It's coming to an end. We've already gone through all of the fallout from Survivor Series. Now we're going to NXT. Not necessarily fallout from uh, from Takeover. No, match wise, uh, but we did have a lot of uh, a lot of post match promos. Yeah, because these were all matches. The matches that happened were all matches that were filmed after yeah. Takeover. Uh, before Takeover. Was it? Were they yeah. filmed before Takeover? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah they're they're usually like dark matches uh, that are put on. Uh, Put on the, the next week's episode so they can round out the week, do a brand new set of tapings, all at full sale, which we'll be seeing next week. But yeah, we had uh, we had Authors of Pain talking about uh, their win in the Dusty Classic. Mostly um, Paul Ellering yes. talking. Uh, we had uh, Ty Dillinger talking about how this was supposed to be the moment. He had so much momentum. This was supposed to be the win, and it didn't happen. And he's, he's really upset at the loss but he's not going to let it happen next time. Yeah. He, is, he is focused and determined to make sure that next time is his moment. Uh, which we were surprised it wasn't his moment either. Um, and then we had some really emotional promos, both from uh, DIY, just totally ecstatic that they did exactly what they said they were going to do. A yeah, still like a little bit in shock. Yeah, a year after they their debut, they are the NXT Tag Team Champions. You know, they just they were just they really 
really invested in this moment and they're just proud of what they were able to accomplish. On the other side of the coin, we had Mickie James, who was very upset losing in her match against Asuka, but was still taken aback by the the reaction she got from the NXT crowd and how... Yeah, she, she mentioned, like, that... She was she was as equally as upset at losing as she was to the fact that the whole experience is ending. Yeah. You know, like she didn't want it to end. Yeah. And all you gotta do is sign Mickey, then it won't then it won't be over. And then you can fight Oscar again. Yeah. Make WWE sh- should sign it. Make I don't care, sh- Raw, SmackDown, NXT, well, as, as 205 far, Live. As far as I've heard is that Triple H Gave her the gave her the offer of coming in. It's just it's up to her to decide if she wants to do it. So hopefully she does. Uh, and then we also had a very short and sweet and to the point. Shinsuke wants a rematch against Samoa Joe as soon as possible, and that will happen in two weeks in Osaka, Japan. Man, that's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a very similar uh, feel to Balor versus Owen yeah. in Japan. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm. I'm excited to see the Japanese fans freak out over Shinsuke. That's that's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a, a little bit of a contrast though because the show where Balor and Owens went against each other was just like a WWE live event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, this is an NXT show. Yeah, this is gonna be NXT from Osaka, Japan. So this will be this will be very interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, but then... So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming also that that would mean that Asuka will also be on that card. Oh, yeah. She, she'll be defending her championship against... Maybe Ember Moon? Who knows? That could, that could be a cool dual main event there. Yeah. Both the titles on the line. That'd be fun to watch. Uh, but as far as matches are concerned, we had Rich Swan taking on formerly Noah Kakoa, formerly Noah Pates, now Kona Reeves... Okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Kona was beating him up, and then Rich Swan was making a fast and frenzied comeback, and then he did a he did a four fifty leg drop. Yeah, well, uh, it was just a front foot leg drop. Was, if he did a four fifty leg drop, he would have like flipped all the way around and then had his legs backwards and on, that's on true. Him. Anyway, he did a flip into a leg drop. But before he could even try and make uh, this some into some sort of winning predicament, uh, Sanity made their presence known, came down and beat down the both Rich Swan and Kona Reeves, uh, just destroying them completely. Yeah, I, what surprised me the most is like right off the bat they threw Rich Swan out of the ring. Yeah, and they, like, and they I focused figured, on Kona. I figured that they would go after Swan like first. Just to get like that reaction from the crowd, right? Because the crowd like really doesn't care that much about Kona Reeves yet. They weren't big on him, no, one way or the other, really. Uh, but for them to like toss Swan out of the ring and then just go for like a four-person beatdown on Kona Reeves kind of surprised me. Yeah, uh, but eventually Rich Swan does get back in. Kona ended up getting the uh, the suplex power slam from Wolf and Fulton. And then Rich Swan was the first victim of the wheelbarrow neckbreaker from Eric Young. Uh, we came back from commercial. We had some trainers and Noe Jose checking on uh, both Kona and Rich Swan. We then had Noe Jose challenge, or pretty much just, he wanted to fight Eric yeah. Young. He said, you don't get to leave. You get to come back in here so I can whoop your ass yeah. all over Toronto. So, uh, Toronto Eric, way Jose. <laughs> Eric Young gets back in the ring. Him and uh, Noe Jose fight each other for a little bit, and then it becomes a four-on-one beatdown on Noe Jose, who then also gets the wheelbarrow neckbreaker from Eric Young. And yeah, so Sanity have uh, now decided that their next tag team feud will be against Noe Jose and Rich Swan. Yeah. I and you of, can't I, get much more opposite than that in I, I kind of almost feel like maybe Kona Reeves will be involved and I'm thinking there's a potential for, like, a six-man tag next week or in the coming Ooh, future. okay. You know, not to say that, the, like, he'll be partners with them, but, you know, just the idea is, like, okay, they beat up these three guys, so these three guys are going to want to... 
Who did Nikki Cross get herself disqual or, uh, disqualified over? We could possibly get like a four person mixed tag. If oh, that's... that was the. Oh, it was uh, Rachel Ellering. <coughs> Wasn't it? Potentially, I don't remember. So yeah, I mean, we, one, yeah. Of the, one of the girls who's not like a full timer. At yeah. NXT. So you know, we we can we can see any combination of that stuff. So yeah, so it'll be, it'll be we kind of have a uh, an idea of where sanity is going uh, from this point on. But then our main event was uh, six women action as Peyton and Billy Kay got uh, their third partner that uh, the faces yeah. challenged them to get. They decided to get Daria from Tough Enough, the MMA expert now who is intense as fuck. Uh, a, a total switch from... She's the powerhouse in that whole trio. Like, yeah, I mean, she to me was the standout when they did that six women's tag after the last takeover. Yeah, absolutely. And she was, yeah, she was the secret weapon of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Uh, and her main target was Aaliyah. Aaliyah got the brunt of Daria just beating the crap out of women. Um, you know, Liv, Liv had a, a, a little, little spitfiery moment at the beginning of the match with, uh, with Billy Kay. Um, and then Ember Moon ended up getting the hot tag. And it was just, it was... Ember starts hitting all these moves and knock, knocking girls all over the place. And Peyton and Billy kind of see their plan kind of, like, dissolving in front of them. And they're like, this isn't working. We need to we need to do something different. Yeah, no, Billy starts yelling, go to plan B, go yeah. to plan or B. She just, like, she, like, brings all the troops together and makes Daria tag Peyton. So Daria gets in while Billy and Peyton are on the outside going, you got this, just go, just go in there, you're fine. And Daria's like, I don't understand what's happening right now. And then she turns right into the twisting stunner from Ember Moon, and Ember Moon just fucking lays her out. The total Eclipse of the Heart. Uh, I see what you did there. Uh, is it called Total Eclipse? Uh, they, they, they still they, have they, a they name said, Yeah, they, well, no, they, they said something Eclipse. Well, Corey said that Ember Moon... Has eclipsed. Oh, okay. Daria tonight. Gotcha. Okay. I'm trying to make it a he. I, he was just trying to make a moon pun. Uh, yeah, obviously, that's it's the only type of pun you're gonna get there. Um. So yeah, the uh, baby face is picking up a win. So I just maybe we're pulling Natalia. Maybe we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll see Billy Kay and Peyton Royce find another partner to try and take on these three until they find that perfect match, which will more than likely be Mandy Rose. Yeah, I just want to tell them to watch out because they may have made a potentially angry. Yeah, no, they Daria. Just, they just let let Daria go to the wolves, and so now it might uh, might come back and bite them in the ass. Yeah, well, it's it, it's a bad situation because they were in a place where you know if they would have worked together a little more cohesively with Daria, that they could have won, but instead they ended up leaving her. And now it's like the two of them have four enemies instead of three enemies. Yeah, they're they're not they're not helping their their chances here. They're just no. kind of, they're amassing an army to destroy them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had an idea, but I lost it yeah, completely. Lost. Well, that was it for NXT. Let's move on to Lucha Underground. Oh, I was going to mention about that. Uh, well, I remembered that one of the things I think they were really trying to get across was the, the team cohesiveness of Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, though, because they did a spot where they did three double team moves back to back to back. Right. Well, tagging in and out with each other, which is kind of cool because you don't see that a lot in the women's division. Is you yeah. Don't see co like, you don't see, like, women tag teams anymore. Yeah, no, uh, Billy and Peyton are, like, the... The opposite of what you mo what you see more often in women's wrestling, especially in the WWE system. Yeah. You don't usually see uh, a, a unit like that, and so yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a, a, a it's a breath of fresh air in what's usually a very everyone's for themselves type of situation. Right. Now Lucha Underground. Now we'll go to Lucha Underground, where we debuted the Rabbit Tribe. Yeah, and right off the bat, they get a title shot against yeah. the Trio's champions. And Matt Stryker and Vampiro were saying that it's because of Paul London's reputation is what got them this Trio's championship match. Well, I mean, so, 
been all over the place. Yeah, yeah so, be Ring of Honor. So Dario uh, obviously assumes, okay, well this guy's this guy's top shit, so we'll put him in a title match. So we had the Rabbit Tribe taking on the Super Friends, and the Rabbit Tribe, man, they are a special kind of weird. <laughs> They're, I dig it. I, I, I do. For some reason, I do too. I, I, I dig it. I don't know why I do, but it is extremely fun to watch. This, the, the Rabbit Tribe, I think, is what Adam Rose wanted the Rosebuds to be. Absolutely. The only thing that they don't have yet, which I'm sure they will eventually, is, a bunny. is women. No, women. Oh. Adam Rose didn't want the bunny. He wanted hot women in the Exotic Express. That's the one thing that they're... If, if they get a group of hot women, or at least just like one they or two... They had some hot women in the Exotic Express. Yeah, but... It alternated a lot. They they weren't the type of hot women that Adam yeah, Rose... Taylor wanted. Hendricks at one point. One point. Good love of Bates at another point. Yeah, that should be him blue pants. Um... But yeah, no, it's, back blue pants, it's a very interesting group to watch. They did have uh, pretty good chemistry with the Super oh, Friends, absolutely. though. absolutely. Lots of really good spots in this match. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite, it was just, it was so weird to see, is Phoenix gets a super kick on Paul London while he's on the apron, and he just, like, leans back like he's going to sell it, and then he freeze frames, and then, like, something happens to Phoenix, and all of a sudden he's okay. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Uh, and there were a few times where I thought the Rabbit Tribe were going to take the trio's titles. It kind of seemed like it. Like, they were very dominant through a lot of it. And the fact that they were a new force, it was like, you know, Drago, Aerostar, and Phoenix were trying to figure out, like, how to combat this weird situation they were and in. And more often than not, they were just confused. Yeah. Uh, Aerostar even at one point drop kicked Drago. They were so confused, uh, but eventually uh, it was what's what's the, what's Checker's name? Uh, Saltador. What? Saltador. Saltador. Saltador or Santador? I, I don't remember. I think it's Santador. Yeah, I, I... Checkers, the guy, <laughs> the 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 human chessboard uh, ends up getting a uh, the fellow board. A what? Or the fellow board. What's a fellow? You ever played a fellow? I've never played a fellow. Okay, I thought you have two multicolored sided pieces. Right. One side's black and one side's white. Gotcha. And so you put like you start with white, black, black, white, and then if you have the white, you put a white on the other side of the black, and it flips the black one in between the two white ones and turns it white. And you just keep doing that over and over again. You have to put your color in with all the opposing color in between your other color. So you do black and then white, white, black, and all the white ones that you've trapped become black ones. And so it's once the board is full, whoever has the most black or white ones wins. Did you catch that? Post down comments. Um, Thumbs up on this video if you play a, a fellow. Ever. Regardless, uh, Santador ended up getting a uh, a bridging jackknife pin of sorts from Phoenix, and the Super Friends retain the trio's championships. It's uh, like the London Bridge. Too bad or, it wasn't or, or the UK Cradle. Too bad it wasn't on Paul London. Anyway, uh, we, go, we go to the back. Uh, we have uh, Mac congratulating Sexy Star on her championship win. Uh, telling, First he's like, no, I should have won that. No. <laughs> he, like, he trolls Just her for a minute. <laughs> and he, he's, he pretty much says he's, he's like... so fucking, like, yeah. no expression Yeah, no, he was, he was serious for a second. Like, Sexy's just kind of staring at him. He's like, I'm just kidding. Well, but like, no, no matter what he's doing, though, his like face is the same. Yeah, like, no, he's, he's he's not a good actor. No, he he doesn't show emotion very well unless it's surprise, because he's got those wide eyes. Yeah, he's got the streak face. <laughs> uh, but he he tells because we know that Johnny Mundo is challenging Sexy Star for her championship in the yeah. main event, uh, and Mac pretty much just tells her like, hey, regardless of what happens out there, I've got your back. Don't worry about it. And she goes, no, I appreciate it, but I need to do this by myself. And, and, so, and, you know, as much as he would like to help, he realizes that she's, she's a strong, independent you don't, woman. You don't argue a sexy star. No, she's a strong, independent woman. You let her do what she wants to do. And so he was, he was cool about it. And so, yeah, we had the, uh, the understanding and then uh, sexy star getting ready for her match. Uh, our next match, though, was 
Killshot taking on former friend, then foe, then friend again, now definitely foe in Dante Fox. Yeah, or John J. Fox. <laughs> That's yeah, what and, I heard when yeah, no, said, well, John J. Fox! Yeah, like, uh, there, there were a couple times when... You heard when Johnson Fox? I heard Johnson. Uh, I also heard... Uh, or, like, you're talking, like, new names on commentary, too? Huh? Like, what they call... Oh, no, no, it was, it, like, the... the When she announced it at the beginning, and then, spoiler alert, Dante Fox won the match. When she announced it again, I thought she was going to say something else. I can't remember what I thought she was going to say at the end of the match. Um... But this was a, this was a fun match. We had you know this is we had them obviously coming from a background where they know each other. Yeah. Um, and so they really played on that as kind of they had they had each other's game plan memorized. They knew like what yeah. the per, what the other person was gonna do, and there was a lot of Dante just like being extremely aggressive, like you know just trying to let out th this anger that he that he has towards Killshot. And, like, so everything he did just had some added emphasis, like, you know, it was almost like he was trying to get some revenge for what happened in, you know, whatever the situation was. Yeah, well, I mean, it, he, at one point he said that he left him for dead. Yeah. And, and so, that's, I mean, whether or not it was intentional, we can't, we, we can only speculate. Yeah, Because exactly. we don't, we haven't heard the story, but, I mean, it is kind of a dick move. Yeah. And you, you I, it's so easy to see why he would be pissed. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, Killshot starts to make a pretty good comeback. Uh, he starts to get a little bit of one-upsmanship on Dante Fox. And, fuck, man, hits that Death Valley driver off of the top rope onto the apron. Holy yeah. shit, that is not cool. And then follows that up with one of his massive double stomps. And we think, okay, that is it. One, two, Dante kicks out. That surprised me. Yeah, that surprised the shit out of me. The crowd lost it. Matt Stryker and Vampiro were freaking out. Vampiro was loving this match because there was just some extra violence in it. Yeah. And he was appreciating that side. Uh, and so, yeah, Dante kicks out. So Killshot tries to go for the kill shot. Um, but Dante is actually able to... Uh, stop it from happening. Uh, was I, was Killshot going for a top rope move when he set up for the? Uh, he ended up doing the the split leg Spanish fly. No, I think Fox put him up there. Okay, so yeah, he hits hits the the split leg Spa Spanish fly and then follows that up with his uh, arm trap DDT that he now calls the Fox Catcher and drops Killshot Dante Fox picking up his first singles victory uh, on. NXT or NXT on Lucha, Lucha Underground. Underground. Uh, he, uh, looked a little worse for wear at the end. Well, despite yeah. being the winner, but I mean, he got fucked up. Yeah, take that Death Valley driver on the apron, man. You're not, you're not. Gonna, yeah, off the second rope. You're not gonna be okay after that. <laughs> no, that's a fucked up. Uh, no, no thanks. Uh, so yeah, we'll see where that ends up going. We had two uh, backstage segments before we went to our main event. One of which was Johnny Mundo making sure that his restraining order uh, was still intact, keeping Angelico away from the temple. Uh, obviously assuming that Angelico was going to come back and try and uh, help Sexy Star in the main event. So he was just reaffirming with Dario that that was set in motion and that there was no yeah, way that happened. Yeah, but Dario did let him know that eventually Angelico is going to come back and I'm sure that somewhere down the line you guys are going to have to face each other. And so, I mean, how do, how do you get a restraining order against someone who works at the same place as you? Uh, well, it's because it wouldn't be, con like, I, the way that they do use Lucha Underground in the temple, yeah. I think it's supposed to be more like an underground fight club right? sort of thing, so it wouldn't actually be going like, oh, this is a guy I work with. Ah, uh, Okay. You know, that'd be something that's like, like saying, oh, here's a guy who I go to like an illegal underground fight club with. <laughs> put a restraint But don't talk room. about it. Don't talk about fight club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, I think that's how that one works. All right. Uh, one of the things we forgot to mention, uh, after the Trios Championship match, we had the oh, yeah, promo from Cobra thing. Moon. She appeared on Dario's yeah. office. Yeah, she she was like she was kind of distract. That's why I thought it was going to be the undoing for the Super Friends. Is I thought Drago was going to be so distracted with her being up there that uh, that he was going to like you know kind of 
be out of the match and, and, and end up uh, costing his, him and his, and his buddies. But basically she just said that uh, sooner or later one day the Drago will bow to his queen. Yeah. So she's she's still stuck on this... Uh, I can't remember the name of the... the uh, Lord something. Right? Yeah, yeah, lo yeah, Lord something. Uh, whoever is... Uh, Lord Kame Guru. Uh, I don't think it was that one. Uh, connected to the Serpent Tribe uh, in some form or fashion. Um, Lord Randy Orton. She's, he's a fucking snake. Um, just re like reaffirming with Drago that if he doesn't do what she wants him to, it's going to be a bad day to be Drago. Um, and then, <laughs> continuing with that restraining order situation, we had a really awkward, like, like Dario and Mundo kept calling each other names. But they weren't telling each other they were calling, yeah. <laughs> calling each other. Like, what a jerk. What? What? Really? <laughs> like, they both said, like, God, he's such a jerk at the same time. And then Dario's like, what? And Joey's like, like, did you say something? No, I didn't say anything. Whatever. And there was, like, really, like, awkward music playing behind it. <laughs> then Johnny Mundo leaves the room, and Dario's just like, what a prick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then... Which uh, I, I can't disagree with you, Dario. Yeah, Johnny Mundo is a prick. Um, then we had another backstage segment with, uh, Dario, uh, heading back to his office. This was Just probably... weird, because I thought he was in his office. I, I'm pretty sure this was after a commercial. At least I, I would think it was after a commercial. So does Dario leave during the commercials? Well, it's... The it's, commercial break is when he goes out of the temple to smoke? Yeah. He's like, oh, it's a commercial. I don't have to be in my office for anything important. I don't want to go smoke. Or he was, like, putting up, putting up, a uh, lost, lost puppy, uh... Flyers because Matanza's gone after he lost the championship. He just walked the, walked the fuck away. He's trying to f find his Rottweiler. Um, but he comes back to his office and finds Black Lotus sitting in his chair. Yes. And uh, he comments on you know how you know it's good to see her back. It was very interesting seeing uh, the Lotus tri uh, the Lotus Triad in uh, in Aztec Warfare last week, and you know she. Tells him that, hey, the only reason we're here is we want to take out Pentagon Dark. Um, you know, and it takes a little bit of con a little bit of convincing, and Dario kind of sees, okay, I can get some violence out of this. So he makes a gauntlet match uh, for Pentagon Dark. I'm assuming this is going to be next week, where he will have to face all three members of the Lotus Triad and Black Lotus herself. Yeah, and it's win or lose... The match continues until he's fought all four yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. So he, so he, normally he, a gauntlet match, you only when you get beat by one, and yeah. the match is over. Exactly. Or you have to win against like all three or four or five of your opponents. This time, even if he lost the first one, he'd have to fight number two. Yeah, he still he has to fight all four women regardless of what happens in that situation. So, uh, I'm very interested to see what type of situation Pentagon Dark has himself in, and how he's going to... Uh, I mean, Because he didn't fare very well in Aztec Warfare. Yeah, uh, the big difference here is it's going to be one-on-one -on -one this time. True. I mean, it might be a ringside, but the, the deal is, like, it happened during Aztec Warfare, where he was already surrounded by people, and they attacked him four-on-one. -on -one. True. Okay. So, yeah, he'll probably have a little bit better of a chance... Because he, he's extremely dominant in one-on-one -on -one matches against most people. The, the thing, though, is, like, even though it is one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like the fact that even if it is a... Even if even if he win, like, he could go against the first one, they could all attack him, that one could get disqualified, Yeah. and then he still has to fight the other three. So they still do have the numbers game, it just it really depends on how they decide that they want to play this. Um... So yeah, so that is potentially next week. Uh, we'll see where that goes. I hope so. Um, but our main event... I don't want to have to wait. Maybe you have to. But you don't even know what you don't have to wait for? Johnny Mundo versus Sexy Star for the Lucha Underground Championship! Hell yeah, Johnny Mundo! Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo cashing in his uh, Gift of the Gods Championship for a Lucha Underground Championship match. Uh, both of them coming out alone, uh, looking at, looking to make this uh, as fair of a fight as possible. Um, yeah, this 
I thought this was a really strong match. Not necessarily the end, but a strong match for Johnny Mundo. Yeah. Uh, I liked his... He was very emphatic. He a lot. And he... Huh? He kicked a lot. Yeah. He, I, I liked that he was... He was finding as many ways to, like, just tear Sexy Star apart. Like, immediately going for, like, STF holds and the curb yeah. stomp and just... Like, he was... He was focused right at the start of this match. Well, yeah, the, the Lucha Underground Championship is, like, been Johnny's, like, mindset. It's been on Johnny's mindset for so many weeks now. It's yeah, yeah. like that now that he has that, now that he has the chance right in front of him to try and win it, yeah. he's going to be, like, totally tunnel vision on it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's eluded him long enough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he was. I'm he honestly was, surprised he hasn't had it before. Yeah. No, it's like when him being one of like the top profiled stars. Yeah. And, and, into well, and, he's, and he's been on. You know, he's been a main star since the very first episode. Yeah. Uh, having that that main event match with uh, Prince Puma. So uh, yeah, no, he was. I I liked his his method of just trying to take Sexy Star down, and then you also you obviously are gonna have that. Sexy Star doing everything she can to to uh, fight back and you know play the play the underdog being the smaller of the two, uh, and she she got some pretty good shots on Johnny as well. The crowd obviously very much in uh, on the side of Sexy Star. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was even a woman dressed as Sexy Star uh, out in the crowd who they held the camera on for an awkwardly long amount of time. Um, and so eventually, we it, it, sexy star gets to a point where she just doesn't care anymore, and she is just she is gonna haul off on Johnny as much as she possibly can. Yeah. They end up going to the outside. Johnny's like trying to like crawl up into the crowd, and she she's like chasing after him. Johnny ends up taking a crutch from the woman that they had the camera on, and starts. Swinging it at <laughs> sexy star, she's like, "Shit, what well, the like hell?" The, like the first part, of the like, the, like got the big gasp from the crowd is like he yeah. yanked her out of the crowd. Yeah, so because yeah, the, she she wasn't letting go of the crutch. Yeah, and so this woman who has a boot and a crutch goes tumbling out. By of, a boot, we mean like a walking boot. Yeah, not like just like a regular boot. Yeah, like she's wearing one boot. And How issue. dare you attack a woman wearing boots? No, it was just one boot. And Son of a bitch. She just had a boot. <laughs> It's yes. a boot time. Sorry, that's an XC. They were in Canada. Yeah. We're in California now. Uh, yeah. uh, Boyle Heights. Huh? Boyle Heights. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. The, the, crowd is, the crowd is just like, how the hell? Why are you doing this? What the hell is wrong with you? He starts swinging the crutch. And then Sexy Star ends up... I, I think he ended like he ended up like trying to swing it, and she kicked him, and he dropped the crutch. Yeah. And so Sexy Star gets it and starts swinging it at him, and he rolls into the rolls into the ring, and like he's like trying to hide behind Marty Elias, and she's she's swinging around, and Marty's like, no, 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 you have to put it down. You can't use the crutch. What's wrong with you? And so as he's like he turns around, he's trying to back Johnny Mundo up and trying to get the crutch away. Sexy ends up getting out of the ring and going to check on the woman that's on the floor. The woman stands up and punches Sexy Star in the face with brass knuckles. Yep. And then goes back to like pretending like, like she's hurt and going down. And then Johnny sees the opportunity, goes out, grabs Sexy Star, tosses her back in the ring, hits the end of the world, and Johnny Mundo is your new Lucha Underground Champion. Yeah, that was a little sad. And then... The hurt woman on the outside decides she's going to join Johnny Mundo in the ring, remove the mask, and reveal that it was indeed Taya. Yeah, the, the, ma the mask had an attached wig. Yeah, it was like, yeah, like a long it was like black, black wig. hair. Yeah, and so she takes it off, and then her platinum blonde with red tips comes flying out of there, and you're like, oh, son of a bitch. And then we had Jack Evans and PJ Black come out and join the festivities. I smell a Ultima Lucha 3 main event between uh, Sexy Star and Johnny Mundo. Yeah. Maybe in some sort of situation where the WUG can't get to him. 
like a cage match, perhaps? Possibly. That's what I see. That's what I smell. What does a cage smell like? Uh, bananas and death. Thanks for that. You asked. Anyway, yeah. Uh, entertaining episode of Lucha Underground. Uh, some fun new stuff going on in NXT. A solid midweek wrap-up, I'd say. Yeah. I think this has probably been the best show of the week. The best shows of the week. Yeah, I mean, well, constantly, I think the combination of NXT and Lucha Underground normally outperforms Raw and SmackDown. So. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, a, it's, it's not out of the norm to say this is the best one. True. But this week, more so with the lack of stuff that happened on both Raw and SmackDown. Just yeah. Kind of amplifies. Even Smackdown just being the goofy show of the week. It was funny as fuck, but not quite as entertaining as NXT and Lucha Underground. So, with that said, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Click all the links down in the description and send you to all of our social medias. Got lots of links down there, eh? Why are you still in Canada? What is wrong? I don't know. There's also a SoundCloud link where you can check out this review along with our indie news. The Raw Review and the SmackDown Rundown, all in podcast form. It's like maple syrup you can drizzle on your waffles. Thank you for that. Uh, you can also check out the link that will take you to Reasonable Wrestling Fans. That's Reasonable with a W. Like, like wrestling. wrestling. <laughs> Where you get all of our uh, other videos, our youtube -er side of videos. We have unboxing videos. We have punishment videos from the pay-per-view wagers. Uh, we got rant videos. We got all kinds of stuff over there. You'll be seeing me get shot by a professional wrestler over there very soon. Or maybe a moose. No, we agreed or professional a wrestler. Hockey player. A goon. As long as it's the goon or Dean Ambrose, that's the only way that's acceptable. Or, or CM Punk. CM Punk is totally acceptable. Um, you can also check out the other videos on this channel that you won't find in podcasts won't like our NXT and our Survivor Series reviews. Uh, next week you'll be getting a top five for the month of November. So look forward to that. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. It's a good midweek, eh? Fuck Jack Evans. Yeah, fuck him. The hoser.